Welcome to Electron Line. Our next problem deals with a drainage canal. We're trying to find the maximum cross section of this drainage canal. And the specifics about it are that the width at the bottom is, let's say, 10 feet, and each of the sides have length 10 feet. Now, the question is, what should be the angle of the sides determined by this angle theta right here relative to the horizontal in such a way that the cross-sectional area is a maximum value? So, first thing we're trying to do is after we draw the diagram like we just did, we try to determine what's being maximized. So, we're going to maximize the total area. And let's call that equal to A. And what I've done here is I've divided into three sections. We have A1 here, which is the cross-sectional area of this particular triangle shape. I have A2, which is the cross-sectional area of the rectangle here, and A3, which is the cross-sectional area of this triangular shape. And we're assuming that the angles will be the same on both sides, so that A1 and A3 will have the same value. Which means that the total area, if we're going to come up with an equation, is simply going to be equal to A1 plus A2 plus A3. Now, of course, I'm going to have to express those in terms of the dimensions that we have. We have H, we have B here, H for the height, B for this distance up here, the same on the other side. And let's see here, how can we do that? Well, we need some sort of constraint in order to find different appropriate values for A1, A2, and A3. So let's go on to number four. We need some constraints, some relationships. So I can say that A1 is equal to A3, which is equal to one half the base times the height. And I can also say that A2 is equal to the width times the height, which would be 10 times H. And now I need additional constraints. I need to be able to express B and H in terms of the angle. Well, we have a triangle here, the hypotenuse is equal to 10. B, well, that would be the adjacent side to the angle because this angle theta here is the same as the angle theta there. Alternate interior angles are the same, which means we can define B as being equal to the hypotenuse 10 times the cosine of the angle theta. And H can be defined as, and that will be opposite the, to the angle, that would be 10 times the sine of the angle theta. Plug those values back in here. I can then say that A1 equals A3 is equal to 1 half times the base times the height, which would be equal to 50 times the cosine of theta times the sine of theta. And of course, since there's two of them, A1 plus A3 together will be 100 times the cosine of theta times the sine of theta. Now for A2, that will be equal to 10 times H, and H is defined as 10 times the sine of theta, which then will be 100 times the sine of theta. So now we have a1, A2, and A3 express solely in terms of the angle theta, which we can then plug in here. That would be step five. And so the area which we're trying to maximize is equal to A1 plus A3 together. That will be 100 times the cosine of theta sine of theta plus A2, and A2 will be 100 times the sine of theta. Now we're ready to move on to the next step. Now we can take the derivative of that and set the derivative equal to zero. So a prime is equal to, we have a product here, so that would be 100 times the first, times the derivative of the sine, which is the cosine of theta, plus the second, times the derivative of the first, which is the negative sine of theta. And then we have the derivative of this, which is plus 100 times the cosine of theta. All right, let's see here. Let's try to simplify it a little bit. So a prime is equal to 100 times the cosine square of theta minus the sine square of theta. 
that would be plus 100 times the cosine of theta. And then I can write this as 1 minus the cosine square of theta. So let's do that. So a prime is equal to 100 times the cosine square of theta minus, well, that would be 1 minus the cosine square of theta instead of the sine square of theta. And then if I simplify that even further, I can say that a prime is equal to 100 times 2 times the cosine square of theta. I can bring this one in here, so that would be plus the cosine of theta, and then minus 1, and I think that's it. I've now combined these two terms right here, so we have 100 times twice the cosine of theta, minus times the minus becomes plus. We have 100 times the cosine of theta right here, and the minus 1 goes here times 100. So that's now the derivative of our function. Now we're going to set that equal to 0. So we have a prime is equal to 0 is equal to 100 times the cosine or twice the cosine square of theta plus the cosine of theta minus 1. And of course, since that is set equal to 0, I can divide both sides by 100 and that cancels out. But now I have to solve for that. And probably the best way to do that is to substitute. We can say let x equal the cosine of theta. That reduces to the following equation, that 0 is equal to 2x squared plus x minus 1, and I can solve this equation a lot easier. Now that we should be able to factor, let's try it. So 0 is equal to, well we give it a 2x and an x, and in the end we have a 1, so that means we have to have a 1 and a 1. What about the signs? Well, we end up with a plus 1 in the middle here, so then this should be plus, and this should be minus, because 2x times a plus 1 is 2x, and an x times a minus 1 is minus x, so that gives you a positive x in the middle. That's good. So now that means that x plus 1 equals 0, or x equals negative 1. That's one of our solutions. Or we have 2x minus 1 equals 0, that's 2x equals 1, or x equals 1 half, that's the other possible solution. Now, of course, we weren't looking for the values for x, we are looking for the values of the angle theta, which means that the two possible solutions are that the cosine of theta equals negative 1, and of course, for the cosine of theta to be equal to negative 1, that means that theta equals minus 100, oh, not minus, but 180 degrees, go and let's take a look over here and see what that means well if the angle is 180 degrees it would completely fold over the side on here to the bottom and the cross-sectional area would be zero so that's obviously the solution for a minimum the minimum cross-sectional area that's not what we wanted so the other option is that the cosine of theta equals one half for that to be true theta must be equal to 60 degrees and that's a much more plausible answer. You can see here that if the angles are 60 degrees, in other words, 30 degrees relative to the vertical, you would have a maximum cross-sectional area. So this is the solution that we're looking for. That will give us the maximum cross-sectional area. And that's how it's done.